Okay, let's get started on today. Welcome everyone. Uh, so quick announcements this Thursday. I might not stream. I will be um, celebrating Thanksgiving in a very COVID friendly remote way. My entire party is a limit of three. Everyone's going to be in masks. We're all going to wear, if, if we even host anything, we might just drop food off at each other's houses. Um, not intermingle, no groups, no sharing of any oxygen. Okay, so that's what you should be doing. You guys should be careful. You guys should listen to Governor Cuomo. He said that this is a Thanksgiving of the spirit. You really are tested. Your thankfulness and your gratefulness is tested this time around. Because you really do have to have to have to show those who you love that you love them. For anyone who's too proud, if anyone who's too entitled, if anyone who's too disrespectful to those around them and disrespectful to the to the to the officials that have dedicated their lives to finding this information, these numbers for us, and 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 who, for those who are disregarding what's happening in the world around them, not only do you live in a small little 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 world that you've made for yourself, but it's a house, it's it's, it's made of sticks and it's going to be blown down very soon uh, with reality. He said that Cuomo showed us the numbers here in New York and they're very similar everywhere else. He said there's only one way deaths increase and that's by the increase in intubation. Intubation is increased because of hospitalization and ICU. And so the only way deaths increase is by through these through these uh, junctions and the only way all of this increases is because of spread. So it's not to say oh people will die anyway. No, the numbers drop. Deaths drop when spreading drops. I know it seems like a very logical train of thought, but there are a lot of us here who don't have logic. So that's why they're not listening. And I know you've heard this everywhere, but I, I really need to take my platform as far as it can go. Please don't gather for Thanksgiving. Don't gather in groups of 20 or 30. Don't, gra don't gather in groups of even 10. Um, try to keep it as small a group as possible. Don't travel. For those who are traveling, you are taking with you a bag full of bacteria and and virus and crap and just dropping it at your parents house that's, that's what you're doing that's all you're doing if you were grateful for your parents you'd protect them if you were loving of, of of your parents you would stay away from them you could be a carrier and you don't know because you're asymptomatic so why would you go to get a test anyway if you were asymptomatic um you could lose one parent you could lose both you could lose grandparent you could lose um, um, people that are younger you could lose people in your life and if you could just for one moment expand the scope of your empathy to spread to those who aren't you you could kill somebody else's uh, 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 grandparents somebody else's um, parents and not, not to say you're gonna it's not homicide but it, but at this point it, neglect is a very very scary thing in this time so please just stay home your artists as it is if your family is gathering, stay in your room, say, I'm sorry, this is a pandemic, you guys shouldn't be gathering. It's for your safety because I love you guys that I'm not gathering. Stay in your room, don't even, just wear your mask, grab your food, go back in your room and watch some Adventure Time. Stay safe, okay, you guys? I, I have no reason to be using my platform to say all this, but other than your benefit, there's no benefit to me looking like another, another Cuomo in your lives. Everyone's so sick of hearing all of this. But, but the, the, the amount of spikes that we're ex expecting are, are, are apocalyptic that are coming up after Thanksgiving and, and oh my God, Christmas. And we're going to just jump into 2021 with the most crazy uh, uh, issues that we, that, that, that we could possibly create for the new administration. We're going to have more to clean up. So you guys voted Biden in. Give him a chance. Please stop gathering please don't gather for the love of god i am i'm i'm it's Iraq and i'm asking you don't gather all right i will try to do a stream that day so that everyone has a place to go stay in your computers i'll try to stream that whole day um if i can if i if i can do critique hour i'll try it um if i can't stream all day i'll be you know using snapchat using instagram to send out stories about what we're doing indoors any art that i'm doing I might do it in all day after hours, early in the day, maybe not in the evening, because again, it's just a small group that we're uh, that we're just me and Abu really, um, and we're just gonna be cooking all day, and that's really that's just as much as we're already you know isolated as it is, and that's as much as we're gonna gather. So I might try my best to create a zone where we can all gather remotely so that we can stay safe. Same thing with Christmas. 
please stay safe, you guys, okay? All right, so that's out of the way. Mama Brack said what she needed to say. Um, so Porsche Studio's on sale. Um, Porsche Studio's on sale on my website. It's thrack.com slash store. It's at 50% off, as I promised you guys. Every year we do a sale just like this one. And I really dropped the price this time around because I know a lot of you have financial constraints um, and you'd like to still benefit from the sale season. Um, you'd still want to buy a Porsche Studio. You still want to use it for your New Year's resolutions. Um, and all my brushes are also on sale, so they're um, a bit off as well as the bundle. Uh, the bundle is really, really, really down. Um, so if you guys want to take advantage of that and grab your brushes as well. Um, and I've recently uploaded um, a quick little time lapse of my latest piece on Instagram. Um, and it just shows you how I've personally used Portrait Studio. Um, but you can see what I've done here. So I, I talk a little bit about how I've used Portrait Studio. If you don't know how to use it, go to my website um, and click on the store icon and scroll down. Um, sorry, on the product icon and scroll down. I've got a lot of featured videos on how to use it and what it's all about and how you can benefit from it. It's the most powerful reference building um, um, software that's available at the moment, in my opinion, not just because I'm biased, but because it gives you complete control of and, and real-time uh, lighting. It's not baked, it doesn't, it's not um, uh, textured, so it's fully active lighting that you can rotate. You can rotate the camera and you can adjust the, the model. You have low-res models for studying planes of the face. You have high res um, uh, 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 resolution portraits so that you could learn how to how to kind of track your blending on a portrait. I use it myself for my own portraits. Um, and then you have high fidelity light, uh, uh, um, like an artificial light uh, projection. So it really does feel like you have a model in front of you and the power of, of creating your own studio just on your desktop. And then you've got a posable figure, um, you've got uh, a variety of low poly, high poly, uh, different kinds of, of, of models that you can use. And the list goes on for the kinds of settings you guys have access to, both in performance and being able to run it on lower end PCs, and then really amazing rendering for higher end, um, as well as uh, controlling the background color, having three different types of lighting, spotlight, camera, and universal. Um, and then the object itself can glow, so you have light emission. It, it just goes on. So if you are interested in having Portrait Studio, I, there's no other time I recommend buying it than in the, than in the, the, the sales, in the, in the fall sale. That's the lowest that it ever goes. In the summer, sometimes it's a 40% off max, but, in, but up to 55% off is coming up uh, for December. Currently, it's at 50 um, so that's a lot of announcements. I'm going to use Portrait Studio to help us figure this painting out. So in the um, post for this on Reddit, and if you want to post your stuff to Reddit, if you want your stuff featured in my videos, go to Reddit, uh, which you can get through isterac.com and click on the Reddit icon here. So um, you're saying when you posted this, you said that this piece looks a little bit flat. <coughs> And, um, and you're not sure why it looks flat. So when you have a scene like this and you've got lighting that's coming in at the exact angle where the shadows disappear. So my portrait studio is set. So when I'm making settings, it's low resolution. And when I still the, the, the mouse, it renders so that I can save on resources on my computer. So what you're doing here is your shadows are almost completely gone. And then you've got a shadow tilted on the side. So right here, I'm just referencing this. Um, and then you've got a background color that is completely dark. Okay, so the reason why yours looks flat is because you've completely killed the nose shadow. Um, so if you press 1 and you shift your mouse, you can control where the shadow is going. So when you think of, let's say you're watching a documentary on Netflix about Grecian sculptures and ancient Greek artists, they never take photos like this. These are the kinds of photos they take for like, I don't know, mug shots and documenting people's faces so the shadow doesn't hide details or scars or this kind of shot is, is just not utilizing the surface, like geography, let's, if I can use that term, of the portrait to help create more drama, to help create more intrigue. So when we're looking at this piece, 
and we see some shadows now traveling across the face. Look at how much variety you have with the shadows that you can use. And you just decided to stick with this one? That's all that you thought you could, you know, get? You have all of this to tell a story with. I mean, I think this one is amazing. Just because of the ambient light that's kind of creating a band right here before the Terminator. So that that's one way to not make it look flat. But really what's flattened is that you have no shadows. And that you diagnosed yourself. And then you're seeing that you have no shadows. So a shadow that's doing that. A shadow that's kind of a little bit on the side. Or just what you had before. Which is. And you can control on the screen as well if these bother you. If using the number one and using the mouth bo uh, mouse bothers you a little bit. If using the mouth bothers you. <laughs> to... um, okay, so what, personally me, I like when a shadow cuts and connects. Because that's when we really have the feeling like the shadow is rotating and then we get its cast shadow right over here. Usually it's very awkward and creates a tangent when the shadow is just almost touching the mouth. It kind of just sits there on its own like a Hitler mustache. So I would say try to use shadows that work as grid lines. You know grid and mesh lines, horizontal and vertical lines um, on a face. Sometimes a cast shadow can create that feeling like it's just a line. You're just tracking the shadow and seeing how the surface or the cheek moves. That's the best way to utilize your cast shadows. So this is, is, is kind of making the eyeball pop. It's showing the shape and fat. It's showing that jingliness of the lower eyelid, that it's a cylinder. Um, and then it's showing that the cheek is a little fatty. And you can see that subsurface band right here where it's just kind of gray along the cheek because the cheek is a little bit more fatty and soft. And you can see these sharp bands right here as well uh, for, the, for the Terminator line before it got defused. So that's how you make your painting less flat. So I'm just going to take a screenshot. Is you can use the screenshot tool or you can just like me use green shot. Is my green shot working? Yes, it is. I'm just not. <clears throat> Let me turn these off. Okay, so I'm just going to close Porsche Studio. Um, Photoshop is weird sometimes. I run both. And I have all my settings on Mac. So for those who are saying, is my computer strong enough? And look at this, look at this quality in the screenshot. That's because I maxed out all my settings. If your computer is not strong enough to do that, if you have difficulty running like, like League on Mac graphics, might make sure when you download Portrait Studio that you are aware you have to possibly run Portrait Studio on lowest settings. It'll still run, but it's on lowest settings, so you might not get the best stuff. But for those who are using it just to identify where are my cache shadows, like where are my cache shadows, where would my core shadow be, it's still very functional in that case. It's just not going to show you every possible pixel for that cache shadow band. Um, so let's apply this stuff right over here. And I haven't unplugged in my tablet yet. All right. So what I'm going to do is on a new layer, I'm going to show you how I put in cast shadows because when I apply them, I don't just, um, on, on, a, on a critique, I try not to worry about the edge of the cast shadow. So you, you see an edge, you're probably doing something like this for a cast shadow. I've talked about cast shadows before. They are not um, part of the core shadow in that they are cast outside of the face. So what do I mean by that? Can anyone explain that? Cast shadow is an accessory. It is not a direct part of the portrait. Um, can anyone explain what I mean? So do I link my Instagram or upload a photo? Yes, a lot of the issues that we that you guys are complaining about, like um, some uh, use issues or... Um, Kind of like uh, interface issues will be changed and they probably have already been changed in the new update meaning that they're already a functional change it's just about when we decide to roll that update out there's more and more users every time we have a sale we have a boom of users and we want to make sure that if we send out this update and all these people will be moving with the server and getting their own update that it's going to be worth that lag that everyone is going to experience um most likely there is no lag abu tells me there won't be 
but based off when everyone goes live and opens their portrait studio next for their update, um, we want to make sure that all that effort is for an update that is absolutely perfect and error and bug free. So Abu combs through everything with a fine tooth comb and then combs the comb and then uses a double comb and then and then goes through that with a fine tooth, a fine tooth comb. It, you have no idea how, per, how much of a perfectionist Abu is with Porsche Studio. That's why we can run so many settings in such a small window with so much versatility is because of Abu's genius way of delivering this, um, this, this tool. So be patient. You have your copy. The update is free. It will roll out. Portrait Studio is more than functional for what you need it for. I'm so sorry about the issues that we, that we currently have. We might send out mini updates just for the changes that are most annoying. Um, as, and if you are having issues, you can always submit a ticket on, uh, on my website, sirac.com. So, cat shadows are the negative areas where the light does not reach, thus defining the form because its mass is directly related to the shape and size of the shadow and the light source's placement. Um, uh, and then we have, um, that's an unrelated question. I will answer it at the end, uh, Inga. It doesn't wrap around the form. Excellent. That's what I was looking for. So it's a, so it's an object that just leaves the face. All right. A cast shadow leaves the face. Write that back to me. It's visible on the face because it's part of it lands on the face. But most of all, it leaves the face. So that's why we can paint an entire portrait without a cast shadow. So when I put the cast shadows in, in this edit as a critique, I'm going to do it with soft brush. Just because I know the cast shadows is going to have a, a gradient to it. It's not so much a gradient, it's just going to be a bit darker at its root. So it's going to look like this. And I don't care if it lands on the nose because I want to make sure that I'm blending the cast shadow as I go. So what I've prioritized is the radial shading and I've layered that. so that I can get the variations of the cast shadow because it's going to be harder to make the cast shadow darker in certain areas without messing it up. And then I'll go in and delete. Now I have everything already blended, I just have to sharpen it. So I don't care about this one right here, this one, just because at the moment I'm only worrying about the nose and then the main cast shadow for the uh, eye socket. So remember, cast shadow reveals the contours of the surface it falls on. So I'm following it that way. And that's how I work with my references. Every time I've painted a portrait, I'm not even sure if I can track the cast shadow of the reference properly. I recreate the scene in Portrait Studio and then I move there. And just kind of learn as well as um, observe kind of what's happening with the cast shadows. All right. So I don't care. I'm really not seeing the portrait you drew. I don't care about the character. I don't care about characterization because it's all about deflattening the form you have here. And that in turn will help your character because it'll present them in a better atmosphere and a better mood. Okay, and then I'm going to, so other ideas for those who are doing Thanksgiving, one thing you can do is instead of gathering with family, if you don't have family, if you don't, or if you're not religious and you have a bunch of friends who are not necessarily religious, but like American, you can all cook something and then just get on a discord call and screen share or hang, I'm not even sure if hangouts are still active. Um, and then just eat together. What's wrong with that? I'm just seeing all these people complaining about about it, and these are people with kids, people with older people in their lives, people who, um, you know, have a reason to be worried about about this about this uh, virus. And and they're just so angry that, that they've been recommended to stay home, that it's been recommended to stay home or not travel, to not gather. It's like someone insulted their, their lifestyle. Do you have any idea how much, um, how many, how many people have demonized Cuomo just because he's, you know, telling people, please stay safe. 
it's really very sad. How can you hire a public, you know, or, or vote in or uh, support a public official, and then when they try to help you, suddenly they're the bad guys. It's really, really just so unfortunate. So please try to stay safe, everybody. It's really not worth it. Next year, you know, imagine, do you even remember Thanksgiving from three years ago? Is it really that important for your identity? Don't you just remember the gathering of the people you love? You know, so it's it's about the people you love, and if it's about them, that shouldn't be a hard decision to, to worry about their state of, of, you know, their health. So I'm pasting the whole thing in, in the before, and now I'm just going to go back and possibly do the thing that I usually do with cast shadows, which is just blur the ends. And then just softly delete with a soft brush. And then same goes for Christmas. I mean, we're all already so, um, we're all introverts really to a level. So if, if you, if you can, you know, stream, do that kind of gathering where you're all eating together remotely, you'll find that the thing that you thought you were going to miss for not gathering, um, face to face, you still have if you gathered remotely. Meaning if you just ate together, um, uh, you know, in front of a, in front of a screen, in front of a camera, you still get to laugh. You still get to hear their voice. You just know they're safe from you, and you're safe from them. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. The only reason I got two flat layers is because I want to layer the darkened layer. And now I do the same thing here, and that's something that seems really cool. It's something that you you already do with your friends on Discord. You know, you just say, okay, be right back, and just gather, can get some food or something. And you guys already gather that way. So please tell your family, give them that option. Hey, why don't we try something cool, something fun? We'll put grandma and grandpa on, on the TV screen, and we'll all just eat together. Why not just do that? I really, really don't see. I don't really don't see that being difficult. But it seems like we've attacked the American identity just for asking them not to. And people forget far too quickly the mass um, graves in New York City just last spring. Do you guys remember those? Do you remember how they were dumping the bodies? Not dumping, but I'm not sure how it looked like dumping. Tons and tons of bodies wrapped up being buried in mass graves, unclaimed people. And and the reason why I have to stay active about this is because there is no other gathering like quite like Thanksgiving that was in the spring. That was just July 4th. That's all outdoors. This is indoors more than July 4th. Everybody comes in and visits on Thanksgiving. It's really the apocalypse is coming if you guys don't stay indoors. I just want to be honest and serious about this. And just be, you know, and, and, you know, just respect your intelligence and not talk to you like your kindergartens, kindergartners just actually tell you that this is life and death. You know how some people tell you something and they say, oh, it's not life or death anyway. No, this is life and death. So I'm using radial shading to darken the edges. And slowly recede the face into the background. And I'll get the ears back. But it's really about the, de the delivery of these shadows. And then again, same thing, I'm just layering with a soft brush. I'm sorry if this is too grim, but this is the na this is the state of the world. And I've, I've been honest with you about a lot. I was honest with you about, you know, my position on the election, honest with you about the future and what that means um, living in the United States. And I'll be honest about this as well. Please stay safe. Please don't gather for Thanksgiving. And then same thing, I'm going to start turning into my uh, turning to my brush, my blocking brush, because the layer underneath was just too soft anyway. You didn't have a lot of edges. And so this is what I do. I just go to my blocking brush and block in all the major highlights, because it'll just result in a really, really clean edge. And so I'm better for edges as well as I introduce the highlights. So you see, I got an edge and a highlight and a large brush. And I know I have very, very little work left to do after that. And you can see a big, like, let me just get the pen. You can see a big, I don't know what the hell that is. I don't even know. 
but you can see the, the change between this value, this value, and that value. Okay. <clears throat> so I might have lost my pen pressure for some tab. Okay, so I'm blocking that entire range in. I can have faith that the reference isn't lying. And I can, just because it looks bad blocking it in does not mean it's the, ra it's, it's the wrong answer. All right. Other ideas that I came up with for Thanksgiving is um, keeping the group small, just saying, everyone, just make your own little island. You know, grandparents can have their own Thanksgiving, and families and, and wives and husbands can have their own. Just private Thanksgivings, micro Thanksgivings. Um, do something different this year. Don't cook a, cook a turkey that nobody will eat. Um, cook something unusual, you know, cook something crazy so that it's more fun and you feel like you're doing something different and this will never happen, happen again. Hopefully this is the last life or death Thanksgiving that we'll get. Last life or death Christmas. Um, we want people to be around next, next holidays. We want, uh, uh, our parents, our in-laws, our, our sisters and brothers and, you know, everyone around. So cook something different. Cook something like sushi, you know, make some sushi. Go get the sushi and make some Thanksgiving sushi. If, if it's going to be a different Thanksgiving, it's not going to be what we're used to, then just might as well cook something different. I personally this year don't have the stomach for turkey. For some reason, I just want to cook the opposite of a turkey this year. Nothing about this year has been normal, and I just want to do something different. So I'll, I'll probably end up cooking like summer barbecue food, like skewers and um and and pasta like cold pasta so do something different in that respect so that it's a little bit more fun for you um and that's really what people should be talking about that's what the news should have it should help people accept the fact that it's not a, a normal thanksgiving it's not a normal time and people should be uh just so that there's no apocalypse in january where there's you know, not just 6,000 deaths or, or something like that, or a, uh, an American dies a minute, or 10 Americans die a minute. And it's just a really, really scary notion, but it's worth thinking about. And then I'm going to show how the entire eye socket area is too dark if the light was coming from the side. And then just, just, just blocking in, that's all I've really been doing. So just take these ideas, take them to your mom, take them to your dad, take them to your family, ask your spouse, ask your partner, hey, do you want to just completely quit on this Thanksgiving, classic Thanksgiving, since nobody's really gathering? Let's make something crazy. Let's all watch, you know, some fun movie. Let's make it a Halloween part two, indoor Halloween. Let's just watch scary movies. Let's get on a Zoom call with the family and eat together if you still want to make it a classic one. You know, it's just not that year. And these are just some ideas that I have, and I just wanted to take the time to share them with everyone. And spread the word, spread the word. We're already a spike, and this is just New York State. New York State is one of the lowest in the, in the, in the country, and we're already experiencing, like, we're expecting 6,000 cases. So it, it's, um, it's not fair, I think. And, and there's, like, this big boom of, of, of nurses and doctors who are quitting. So I just wanted to take some time to talk about it and I will refocus back. So again, this is what I do. I just, I'm in my mind's eye, I'm not even seeing the portrait. I'm just seeing form and you can see in the navigator, it's already reading. And I'm just trying to show you that even though the portrait in, ref in the reference in Portrait Studio doesn't quite look organic, looks a little bit like a still Android, the, the features of the human face, what unites a 40 year old, you know, steel worker with a with with a with a with a beautiful 15 year old model is the fact that we all have foreheads nose bridges and cheekbones and chins right so those are the um uh unshakable things that read as a human that's just genetics we all have a skull we all have a jaw so the fact that i am just referencing those is why i'm forgetting about the face and you'll see in a second once i start blending it'll all come together and I just blend with my smudge brush. So again, I don't care if it's not clean. The thing that is the most important is the, the sharpness of each cast shadow and the accuracy of each cast shadow. Write that back to me. The accuracy of the cast shadow is really important. Yeah, you can, you 
can break some rules like see how my cast shadow ends above the nose line where hers ends below the nose line nobody's gonna sue me for that it's not a bad thing um but when it comes to the fact that the cast shadows all move at the same time and the fact that um, the eye socket shadow is the shape of the eye socket falling down and it's separate from. And the reason why I showed you this method is because, yes, paint your whole face without cast shadows. Just remember where they will be. If you have, for lack of a better term, the balls <laughs> to paint cast shadows while you're painting the rest of the face, do it. Um, but just remember that it might hinder um, how you're observing the, the, the core geometry. Core geometry has a cat core shadow. Cast shadow is an accessory on top of the, uh, the, the cast shadow. Cast shadow is accessory on top of the core shadow, sorry. All right, so see, I, even with the eyes, some of you are gasping just watching me just throw a big block on top of the eyes, but that will, that will be fruitful in the end. All right. And then there's shadow on the interior. Sometimes those inner eye uh, spots aren't always light. Sometimes they're dark. <clears throat> yes. Um, the guts, the courage, the bravery. <laughs> um, uh, let me see if there's any questions. If you want free food, I will require more. Your friends get a free meal. No, it sounds like a good food. Yeah, or like um, get each other pizzas. You know, that that's really, really cool. Just on Thanksgiving Day, if any pizzerias are open, get each other pizzas. You guys can all try and fail at some really, you know, different foods. You can, somebody can, you know, you guys can get Chinese food. Chinese food on Christmas sounds like a, you know, a classic. You can do it for Thanksgiving. You might start new traditions this year. Go for that, you know, fish tilapia lightly fried fish filet for Thanksgiving. Just make it different, make it fun for your kids, make it fun for you so that we avoid uh, a, pan a pandemic apocalypse. All right, and then the lips are very easy. I'm never worried about lips because they always get over blended. The only thing I really worry about the lips is just whether or not I've um, represented the cylinder well. All right, so automatically, because I overblocked, what is that going to result in? What do I have an abundance of? Can anyone answer? So what I mean by a cylinder is the top of this lip gets all the light, just like that. And then there's a little outline around the chin. Edges, excellent. So I have tons of edges. So when I take away these edges, and let me show you really quickly in the video Abu made for me. It's basically just my process, which I reward to patrons. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of personal work, so there aren't a lot of rewards every single month, but um, there are definitely um, anything that I paint is sent out to patrons. But here is the video, and what I want to show you is... Wrong video. Um, where is it? This freaking peer view looks exactly the same. Okay, so you can see in a second how I build my reference. This is just for the promo. And in a second, you'll see it. Right? So there's that little, that little point here where suddenly things are blended. Right? Watch. Okay, so there's zones. This zone, forehead, fat pockets, anywhere where I wanted relief between all that excessive texture on the, uh, on the hair. Those are the points. So you can see how I overblocked that's my technique. That's it. I overblock and then I blend after and then I smudge after to get that finish. So that's exactly the same thing I'm doing here. I'm overblocking. And then now I can comfortably block in those little highlights. Sometimes I do this after. I don't really care. There's no, um, it's just sometimes when you're blocking in the little fine highlights, it feels good. Like if there's something different about it, you just kind of get a rush when you block in the highlights. It's very different. That small spike in contrast with that little brush stroke, it, it's different than blocking in, feeling a little bit clunky and heavy when you're blocking in the shadow. So it's like, a, I like to separate those two, but sometimes I'll just block everything. And if I'm a little bit insecure about my blending, if I'm a little bit, you know, not that confident with my painting that day, 
I'll just block everything in just to be 100% sure that I that I gave it my all in that in that way. Uh, where is my comment section? Okay, there we go. All right, so where are we blending? So I don't want to over blend the cast shadows, but I, but I will start blending the regions. And I'm just using my smudge brush, which is on sale. And I leave it on low strength all the time. The nose gets blended out. And usually I, I'll start with the bigger sections, which is just forehead. Sometimes you don't have to raise strength. Sometimes you just have to press harder with your brush. And every student that I've ever had in private tutoring, I've always told them to start with the forehead and move into that brow bone just so it looks like it's actually blended. If you lose detail, it doesn't matter because the bed of locks is very, very healthy. And I don't want to lose too much detail around the eye. And on the forehead, I don't want to disrupt anything there. So I'm not going to use a very large brush and then I'm just going to zoom out and make sure that there is a nice transition between that part of the forehead my strength is at three percent so I can really press harder to blot to smudge just like you would in real life and then I'm blending the sides of the nose smudging and blending from a distance is actually a lot it reveals a lot more to you I didn't have one block. You can see I reblock, which is the cheekbone. So it feels like she's emerging out of a, a shadowy area. And I'm using the edge of that block to reveal more of the lower circle, the lower dark circle of the eye. And this is my technique, and that's it really. There's no magic here. It's just provide more than what you need so that when you block, when you're left, when you're done blocking and you're, le you're left with more edges than you need so you can smudge away. So it's like you're building off the next. There isn't too much re re recursive, I guess I could say, um, process. You don't have to go back too much or blend too much. For those who use alt tab to smudge um, or, or just blend, uh, alt, is it alt, no, it's like alt color. I'm not sure what people use um, for other programs, but it's alt for color picker. Not alt tab. Um, and then again, just smudging here for that subsurface scattering just around the forehead. But you see how nice this sharp little area is, and I'm going to just re resharpen it in a second. I'm going to blend the mouth over blend it a little. Yes, and it is kind of repainting the entire face, but I wouldn't say we're losing um, what you had before, which just was a nice kind of glowing face, but it definitely wasn't something I'd attribute to a dark scene. And then... So I could have just slapped on some cast shadows, but I really wanted to show you the whole painting process. It's easy for me to critique. It's hard for me to critique and represent. Um, it's hard for a critique to represent actual live workflow. So I wanted a chance to show exactly what my thinking is. All right, so I get that middle band and I blend that out. Sometimes it's worth it to smudge for a middle band. You see what I just did? I didn't care too much about the edge. And then maybe with soft brush on and a radial shading technique, I'll drop that edge into the background. Just like that, so I have a clean cheekbone. And I'm just piling up. Always use low opacity for that. And sometimes you can use radial shading once you're done smudging, just to climb to your highest points. And I kind of want to feel, I feel like I, I need to add a little bit of an extra pool of shadow just here. I don't like what you've done with the pupils. I feel like they're really killing the scene. Um, so I would, I would recommend you add them in later. That way you could really get the eyeball to pop. And then we could add it later. So 
So meaning get a flat value for the eyeball and then find where that cat shadow is. And then there's sometimes different eyebrows are different. This model, I'm just going to give her her own little unique eyebrow look. So the more we block, the more of a resolution we have as well. So write that back to me. The more I block, the more resolution I have. So block everything, meaning the water line. And then the water line obviously needs to be darkened in the cast shadow areas. But it kind of just stays a little bit too, catching a little bit of light. Since the light is at an angle, it might catch the water lines a little bit better than anything else. like that and then I'll zoom in and expand on my blocking so my blocking is no longer blocking it's detailing but I'm still using the same brush you understand my meaning so you you're no longer blocking by definition of oh early stage preliminary blocking now I'm still blocking I'm just zoomed in and then again I'm providing edges more edges than I need at a level that I never did before and if you don't paint like this I really don't know how you paint you must have a back and forth motion, zooming in, zooming out. Um, you don't really have any rhyme or reason um, to your um, to to when you use a square brush. It must be just one of the many brushes that you employ. Again, it, it's there is a method that we have to follow, and that method is a very efficient layering method. Um, the technique is the is the result. Um, that's it's hard to explain other than really saying that, but the technique is a response to the anatomy as well. So the technique is the anatomy. And then there's, you know, the depth issue is that she also has a very flat, uh, you know, like a, she's level with the camera. There isn't much going on in that regard as well. All right, and then I'm just going to Strengthen the nostrils, very easy nostrils. You need two things. You need the edge of the nostril right at the top. There's going to be a bit of bounce light on this side since it's dark enough to reveal one. And then you need to blend the rest of that block. And then you can zoom out and adjust your smudge. A smudge brush doesn't have to be the only way you organize values, but it is the best way. Um, to soften uh, edges before you just get in with soft brush and color picker. So from right here, my band for the balance light is too strong. All the way from here, I can soften a band. Whereas if it was a color picker and a brush, I'd have to go in there and, and just manually organize that harsh edge. So smudge brush, blocking, and soft brush radial shading are the three main tools for practically anything I do. Anytime you see me paint or critique, those are the tools I'm using. There's a little bit of a pocket under each nostril, just like that. And then sometimes I'll go in and re-block the side of the nose, just so I know it is the sharpest it can be. This is a low resolution photo, uh, like a painting, so it's not the best. Thing to use. I do want to borrow the model from Portrait Studio, her little cheek, um, cheek bend, and the little wrinkle on the lap line. It's not like a wrinkle, it's just like a contour. Kind of will add something else and I only smudge one side of it. And then it's kind of smudge the tail. And there's still more issues to cover, meaning that there is a not enough of a difference between one side of the face and the other, so it's going to be large cast shadows I will apply later, and those are usually the finished ones. So it's mostly, you need more cast shadows and here's how to do it, uh, critique. Not just slap them on. And then there's appropriate distribution of contrast, which you had an issue with because yours was extremely bright. So I'm just going to really push the highlights now. And then there's those large blocks. 
just on the forehead I feel like we could use a bit of a stronger core shadow for the forehead and I think I've gone as dark as I want to but I'm not sure so I'm just gonna slightly reblock that and that's okay if we have to reblock some areas and then using possibly lighten mode I'm going to clean up some of the rogue kind of areas where I have should probably copy the reference you know where I have patches of shadow in a light area and once those are clean I'll re-smudge re-blend and just uh, finish up cast shadow of the mouth is important since just because the mouth is soft doesn't mean its cast shadow will be soft mouth cast shadows shouldn't be over blended it's the mouth that we over blend because it's a soft thing without any bone structure under it the teeth don't count because they're not connected they're not inside the lips which would be weird um so we have uh cast shadows that are sharper for the mouth but the mouth itself and its core shadows are softened all right, and then any last minute changes? I feel like the lower eyelid here is a touch too dark for that side. And then um, I'd like to limit that shadow. And I'm just gonna try to trust the reference for what's happening with the cheekbone. Because I need the edge of her face to be strong. Since this edge is proceeding into shadow, I need a clean edge on this side I can trust so that she doesn't look like she's a floating blob monster. Okay, so from this distance, I'd like to add a little bit more contrast. Not contrast, really. Edges are also contrast. You can categorize edges as a part of contrast since um, they have an ability to reveal hidden values and obviously the contrast between them. <clears throat> then one more thing, I want to just make her nose bridge a little more slender since it was a bit mechanical looking. And I'm just taking some creative liberties. Since, again, you don't have to copy your reference exactly. What was the point of using Portrait Studio Reference today? to show you that the cast shadows and just have to be accurate in a general way. They just have to work with your, your painting in order to establish. So really shrink your smudge brush. You don't want to lose that line. You just want to soften it for the organic read, but it's still very powerful in the, in the navigator. So now it looks like a real forehead. I'm not using a, a large smudge brush for the edge because I don't want to lose that. See, that's not good because that's too soft again. What was the point of reblocking? So you have different degrees of blending. So when do I blend too much? I serac on a flat surface that's fatty, meaning a cheek or a forehead, which isn't fatty, it's just soft. Um, and when do I not blend as much? When you reach an edge, like the edge of the temple on the forehead or um, the socket or any cast shadows should not be over blended unless they're super soft. Uh, but again, why did I use this model and what's the point of it? Model on left looks like teacher from Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, she does. Um, the Teacher Respect live stream as a, as a schedule. Yes, I do. Um, every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Maybe not this Thursday, but I'll try my best just to hold something online for everyone for uh, for Thanksgiving, for COVID-friendly Thanksgiving. Um, so anyone have an answer? What was the point of these cast shadows? What is What is the takeaway? What shadow under the chin... The shadow under the chin is a major offender. What do you mean? Is it, you mean it's difficult to pull off? The shadow of the chin or the shadow under the chin? So now I'm just smudging to blend. You really need higher resolution to get the best smudge. I mean, this is just a little bit too small. Usually 3000 by 3000 is just like the best resolution for smudging because you just get more range. So if you're, and you get a softer smudge. So make sure your resolutions are nice and high. Um, and if you can't run a 3000 by 3000 canvas, start saving up for uh, for a computer. So it really is only as powerful as your tools. I know your knowledge is still your knowledge, but when it comes to digital art, don't be at the mercy of a bad tool. 
All right, so all these areas that can be blended better now, I'm just going to run over them. You see this little textury spot right here? See that? I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to sharpen it, in fact, because this is a nice little texture I just got. I'm not going to touch that anymore. And then of my own volition, I'm going to try to make it seem like there's a little fat bump right above the eyelid, just like that. And then I'm going to carry that possibly, maybe if I like it, I'll keep it. I might carry it as a hooded eye bump. Do I prefer that or do I prefer, let me see. I mean, it does look nice and it's copying the reference better. Let me see if I have to get rid of that. So now I give her fat under her eyelids. See, I'm just customizing. Customizing my insurance. All right, and then I'm just gonna fix that belt. Since it's just, I just decided on this, I just have to go back and correct the core shadow of that cylinder of fat. Uh, hence my remake. The mark on edge hierarchy, but no, it's so soft, it's actually registering as wrong, and that's a distraction. Um, you mean mine? Sharp, hard, firm, soft, lost. You mean right here? But that's easy to correct later. You just start a new layer and delete at the edge. Okay, so I just didn't want, I want to give her a little bit more variety, and I'm just cleaning that up. And I know class is running a little bit long, but I did get in a little late. So I'm sorry if this is just a touch too long. And I'm going to radially climb up. And the eyeball, so the eyeball just pops right out. See that? You guys miss out on three-dimensional eyeballs. And then you wonder why eyes look flat. And from this distance, I'm going to shade the whole eye. Look, 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 look. My favorite bit. I love this bit because it's always at the end where I push the blackest black. Just like that, I'm just like pushing the lowest I want to go, just with soft brush, just for that late stage stuff. And as to answer the question, which hasn't been asked today necessarily, but it's been asked to me before, asked of me before, do I render both eyes equally at the same time? What I do, and you just saw my little uh, gif, I render one eye perfectly so that I have a goal for the other eye. There's no reason to challenge my mental capacity and my energy while painting, which is very little considering I have two discs in my back and I'm always really frustrated and I'm always fighting against my ADD. So I, I don't really want to overwhelm myself and I want to max out my skill in that sitting, in that session. Just push as hard as you can for one eye so that it's your goal, you know, it's your goal setting and then move from there. I got to make this eye fatty as well. So I'm just climbing out. And you see how every every brush stroke I take now builds off the initial blocks I found with the help of my reference, with the help of my blocking brush, with discipline, not blending too soon and fighting that satanic urge. If Satan enters your mind and starts whispering, hey, start blending now. No, 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 just give it a shot. Start blending. Come on, start blending. Who cares what Mr. Rack says? Just blend. It'll feel good. Don't listen to him. He's a liar. He's a son of a bitch. And he's going to fuck up your painting. Make sure you have that discipline you need so that you're not blending too early so you can get to this stage. Right? Because we're fighting a lot of demons as artists. Right? Hey, go open up Netflix. Paint while you watch something. Just get some distractions. Hey, look at that league icon. That looks good, eh? Let's go. Let's go play some leaves. Just one game. Just one game. Ten years later. No life. No no goals. Nothing happened. Just you lost your time playing League and League won't even honor you for giving them ten years of your service. Okay? Discipline. Goes a long way. Do teacher Israx's brush sets can be used in Procreate? I'm not sure if they can. I heard that they can. Um, tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies. <laughs> Um, that devil voice. <laughs> League addiction is a blight on the art community. Absolutely. League addiction is real. I was addicted to League at one point. I played five games a day for like a year. That was the year we built Portrait Studio and kind of did good. 
But uh, it's not to say that League helped me do any of that. It's it's that I was so angry after playing League that I just I could not handle. I was I was just not gonna accept that this is my life. If I'm gonna lose in League, I'm gonna win in life. All right, but you guys are all plat and you really dedicate your lives to League, and that's just not a good thing. Alright, so I'm just gonna, sometimes I won't blend the edge, sometimes I'll smudge it. I mean, sometimes I'll blur it. Alright, sometimes all an, a, a cast shadow edge needs is a nice, good spanking of the, of, of, the <laughs> of the blur brush, okay? Don't forget about the blur brush. Blur is a valid quality to the physics of light on form. Write that back. Don't forget about the power of blur. Blur is very different from smudge. Smudge is to combine two values. Blur keeps those two values separate while creating, a, you know, it's a very thin band of blending. It's very thin, too thin to call it blending. It's a blur. It's a very specific term for a very specific thing. So sometimes you guys really confuse the call to blur with the call to blend. And the two are very different from each other, and an artist should know the difference. Just as much an artist should know a difference between yellow and orange, they should know the difference between blur and smudge. Okay, so I just softened that edge, and then just from a distance I can see that nose is not helping. And If I squint my eyes, I don't know why I divorced those two shadow bands, but I can see that I made a mistake. Okay, and you can see here, 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 all the values are a little too different. So I'm just going to go back and clean that up, choose a value, go on darken mode, and then just start brushing it over everything. And then on the same mode, on the same brush, just on lighten mode, I'm going to brush it over everything. And then go back to darken mode. So all I'm really doing is just like balancing, leveling out those patches there from the back and forth, which happens in a painting. The hardest thing to do is try to pull this off with actual paint, physical paint. Some of the one of the hardest tasks an artist has to do is clean up an area that is just too messy. This is a solid edge. This is the, one of the two types of edges, which is one object in front of the other. So it warrants the use of this sharpness right here, which is what the artist from before was talking about. <clears throat> so you've got a shadow, core, an extended core shadow for the chin itself, which needs its own edge. And then the actual cast shadow. I'm going to use as lighten. Alright, and then I'm not sure what was up with the neck you drew. Maybe it was your reference, maybe she was a little bit heavier. I'm just going to clean that up. Again, a lot of my own decisions and portrait decisions are in this. And I'm also going to do one more thing, which I could have emulated in Portrait Studio. I just didn't want to bring in another object, but you can do it in Portrait Studio if you wanted to. Is um, is just cast one large shadow. You said you want more drama, more less flat. So that's one thing I would definitely do, which is a large cast shadow across the face. And I'm just going to over blend and over smudge the lips, soften and smudge this cast shadow into a nice curve into the chin, soften that, soften that, soften this cast shadow the further it gets. And then from a distance, I'd like to just pull off some more little changes. I don't have the original reference you use, so it's hard for me to stay true to it. 
I'm going to create like a little bump in the nose. I will reapply the, um, the pupils and the iris before I add in that last little push of drama in the lighting. And then you can feel free to darken the eyebrows if you need to. I'll just use my pencil brush. If you feel like you're missing out on the thicker eyebrow, like a body of hair just here, then feel free to bring it in. I like it bare, mostly because the reference is inspiring me to keep it bare. It just looks like a cool character versus kind of how Norm a uh, full eyebrow can look. And then I forgot to blend those. Toss in those dark spots or the corners of the mouth, which are really important. And I might just blur those. Actually, I'll smudge, reapply. And you can set a hotkey for smudge just for your smudge, smudge tool, which you should always have equipped with a smudge brush that scatters. I spent a lot of time developing mine. You can get grab mine. Or you can just experiment and make your own. I'm going to give her a little bit of a stronger dark circle here. She kind of looks younger. That's mostly because we got rid of the cheekbones. If you want her to look a little bit older, just give her back her cheekbones. <laughs> That's usually what happens when a character gets older is that they just get their cheekbones back. Or get their cheekbones, period. Um, the shadow on the side of the nose right now, it needs to be lightened just because it's on the lighter side and I don't want to do any value sharing. Uh-oh, teacher's value sharing. <clears throat> and then you see that little speckle I just added? Just take a look. See how gradual that is? It's just adding a little bit of expression. Just like that. I will... Um, kind of smudge out this part of the eyeball just because I'm about to add the pupil. And I'm going to change her type of eye from the model. Again, the model doesn't have to be copied as a person. It needs to be copied as a, a character. It needs to be copied as a... can be copied as a... It doesn't have to be copied as a person or character. It can be copied as an objective source for accurate human cast shadows and a light source. What I mean by human cast shadows is the cast shadows a human would have considering they have a forehead, nose, chin, etc. All right, um, I'm gonna get my brush and then just instinctively darken on average, just a pool of shadow under this eye socket. And let me just show you the difference between those two. So before that, after that, it's like an averaging of those cast shadows. And sometimes I will throw in a, a kind of dark circle or bag right under the eye. And if that's on the other side, it's a bag plus the light. And that needs to be separate from the lower eyelid. The lower eyelid has its own band and the, and the eye bag has its own band. So this is the kind of stuff, if you see me doing an after hours, this is the kind of stuff I don't get into. I don't explain things like this while I'm painting my personal work because I'm just trying to paint. And chill and make silly jokes with my viewers. Critique hour is the only time I'll sit there and explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. So every Tuesday and Thursday, don't forget, mark it on your calendar. If you are free that day, if you don't have a class, if you feel like just learning passively, that's that's when I'm that's when I'm critiquing. That's when I'm talking about what I do. And usually I don't go this much in depth, but because there's not much other than 14 day challenges to look at in the community, I usually go this much in depth. 14 day challenges at least. <clears throat> okay, um, some other things I feel like I should be doing is, just because now it's towards the end, I'll duplicate, filter, blur, Gaussian blur the whole thing, and then delete away at what I want, which is just the face, and a little bit of the neck, so I've just blurred out the edges. I'll throw in that, before I put in the pupils, I'll throw in that cast shadow for the very tippy top of the forehead. Again, to add that little bit of drama. I feel like it's missing one. 
And you can again just put an object in front of the model in Portrait Studio to get your cast shadow. That's too much. I usually don't even fuck with flow. I don't even know why I want flow. And then because I want her to be a little bit more feminine, I'll probably just add a drop in the values here. Mm, I want it sharper than that. And it could be a lot more dramatic than that. It could just cut right across the face, which actually looks really cool. And then I'm just going to drop in the pupils and the iris. Usually you guys are always rushing those because, oh my god, I'm drawing a ghost. Oh my god, it doesn't look good. Oh my god, it doesn't read. That's not what makes the portrait read. What makes the portrait read is this layering of all of the values, is this really, really careful application. You place in your pupils and the iris. Yes, it reads finally as a human being um, because the pu but the, the eyes are just how we communicate and the pupils are just a big part of, of how we make characters read as people, but they're not more important than the cast shadows. Okay, so this is how we kind of survive the painting into the later stages. And I'm trying to give her that same dead look, kind of that just drama. Oh, oops, wrong brush. And then I'll just throw in the pupil. Usually I'm just a little bit more careful than this. Right, so it's not so washed out anymore. It has some edges. And you could do something else. I mean, you can make her look up a little bit more. Her eyes do seem a little bit droopy. They're kind of just falling to the side and we have a lot of upper eyelid space. And then to make pupils look realistic, make sure you shade them as if they are dishes. You know, they're catching light in some areas and some areas they're not. So I'll turn off the cast shadow for a second. So again, I don't really go this much in depth while I paint for my personal stuff, but I definitely do this on critique hour, like right now. And sometimes we have a little bit of see I'm not gonna put light here there's a cast shadow right here so I'm putting light where there would be light in that area and that's kind of how you get that realistic look as for the speculars who knows where speculars come from it could be the light bouncing off the face onto the onto the eye it could be the light itself reflecting in there there sometimes there's no specular highlights you can fake your way to a specular highlight it really doesn't need um, too much thought like this. This is that's a bit too much. It looks like smaller. To turn off the brush preview, you can put it somewhere there. And you can put it somewhere there. You can put it just under here, which will actually make the face, make the the portrait look a lot more emotional, just because we're borrowing from the staple kind of tearful eye but it's just on the outer rim of the pupil, of the iris. There's no rules, as long as you have a reference, it's kind of telling you what the human does, <clears throat> what the human look is. I don't know why she's so sad, this is really sad. Then you can just sneak in one over here. Plus that, you can get rid of that one that we just added. And then, uh, I feel like they're too big. I don't like, um, big pupils. One thing that I, that I would do is just lower the size of the waterline. Shrink it a little bit just to make her look younger. And then the core shadow of the lip. Also, 
Okay, so that's pretty much my process. Overblock, blend afterward, cast your shadows. And then that's kind of how we brought that drama in. One thing I would do that's not present in the reference is just really exaggerate that lower shadow for the neck. I don't want the neck to look like it's as important, and this is probably what a photographer would do anyway, but as important as the uh, head. I wanted to complete the drama that she's in a dark room. Another thing I would do is just throw a big brush here just to diffuse that cash out. You don't have to, just look at the difference. It's just to diffuse that cast shadow as if the cheek has a bloom on its own, on a light's way out, created a bloom. If you wanted that, that watery look to the skin as if it's like a watery lagoon, you're just really adding in very small blocks of highlight across all these markers here without blending them. And you can blend them in that they can be blurred or um, they can be softened or they can be smaller. Blend them meaning like make them less visible in the environment, like blending with the environment, not blending to like blend them out so they're no longer tiny little speckles. Um, but yeah, you, that's as much as you can do for the, the little water lines. I'm only going to keep it watery around the eyes just because she's crying, so I want to make it seem like She's crying because people are still hosting Thanksgiving during a pandemic. Don't want the side of her nose to be too dark. And then just softening the edge of that. And you, you never had to have the lower, the dark circles. You didn't have to do any of that. That was just something I added, or the bags. As I age, I feel like I age my characters. And you can see what I mean by the lower droop, that droop in the lower eyelid shape. Kind of looks a little bit old and aged. You can get rid of them. And then you can boost the contrast here as well. And a new layer is best. And that's just um, placing in some more paint there. Just so we have a bit of a jump upward and just soften it make sure you blend it back in. okay so that's why it looked flat because you actually flattened your piece by not having any cast shadows <clears throat> um i do want the dark circles back just because they're really cool and uh, i want to show you really quickly the the droop in the eyes, which is not feminine. I wouldn't say it's what we would use on female characters, though it happens for females. If you are learning a face, if you're learning through quarter view, um, if you're learning um, basic stuff, side view, if you're learning how to draw a male, if you're learning how to, you know, how is that droop going to translate into those different perspectives and then stay for the male and then use it for the female? Do you see what I'm saying? The droop is such a specific. Um, tool to use in reads. How are you even going to preserve it when you start doing through quarter view? Side view, how are you going to translate it? Study the downward droop of the eye, of just the basic eye, uh, female, so that it can just work for you and then you can study your side view through quarter view and not have to constantly entertain that one particular type of eye that's not even common for females, which is the downward droop. Um, usually females just have a very a more beautiful upward lift to the brow bone compared to the low set downward droop of the male or the level eye of the male face. You can see some of my brush strokes are still present. That's okay too. If you want to blend those out, go ahead. Okay. So cast shadows. Um, uh, blocking more edges, cast shadows that reveal the form are all ways to make your painting less flat. Any questions at all before I get going? I'm just gonna kind of step away from my reference and just try to pull off some stuff on my own.
never did the other cheek fold on the other side. So any questions at all? Um, kind of insane how fast you can do that. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's fast. It did take my time. And then I'm just going to blur that. And then with the soft brush, just kind of drop. And then connect that core shadow. And, and I feel like it would be a disservice not to darken the side of the nose a little bit, not to darken that far lip, not to connect um, this kind of shadow with that, just for that extra bit of drama. It just depends on what you're doing with this. In our Patreon Discord, we did book covers, um, high drama book covers, and we were talking about all of these units of design, how to paint a book cover with just the portrait. This looks like a book cover now. <coughs> How to tell the story with just the book cover, and we, we, we talked a lot. A lot of people opted in for that really dark book cover with the face barely peering through. Um, and this falls in that category. And her little smile is kind of just really, really cool as well. It's kind of just helping tell a story about a character that's sure of herself, but also has a lot of a, a lot of struggle. So I'm not projecting over here. <laughs> Don't say I'm not aware of myself. Um, I've always liked the kind of milky eye, even though it's I'm not appropriate here. But you know me, I love the brown eyes too. They just look so realistic and um, they just pull off so much more. We also covered expressions a lot in Patreon. Um, so a missing eyebrow is actually not great for a character. You want to always show the eyebrow whenever you can. So I would to personalize this even further. I would just um, kind of just toss up that eyebrow arc. I know I'm losing that little highlighter, but it kind of makes her a little bit more confident. But you also have that low set in her brow that kind of makes her look tired. And kind of angry. All right, so that's how we move away from flat. We even think about the character's design. We even think about who the character is, and um, that's pretty much how a painting is made. That you you have some solid techniques. These techniques help keep the light fidelity high so that the character looks more realistic. Hopefully the character is something you care about enough to write ahead of time or write as you paint so that you could have something that reads as, as not only realistic in, in form but realistic in personality. So that's the process of painting, you know, and I never really go in depth as much during my after hours. It's just in classes where I would demonstrate and like demo the entire process. <coughs> Okay, I think the far neck as well would be a little bit darker. And possibly have another cast shadow kind of falling on her face, letting in some light. You can mess around with the levels just a touch, not too much. So where you were before was you had a very, very flat scene. And the face is transformed significantly, obviously. I'm not using your reference. I used the Portrait Studio reference. So you have the before image, image size. Completely different face, but you can see why it looked flat, because you had this fully visible character. And then after, the, the, the character is respected through the background color. So if you want to save this character, just just get your eyedropper, just get the paint bucket and just lighten the whole scene so it looks like, I know this is ridiculous, but just bear with me for a second. Lighten it so that it looks, you know, that it's it's an overcast day and all the cast shadows are diffused and it makes sense. Um, but if you want it to be this dark background room, this dark room, maybe her eyes should be smaller, mine were a little bit larger. Um, the expression is a little bit more dynamic as well. 
but uh, you have to respect the dark rooms and how the character looks like they're emerging. And the only reason that happened is because I low opacity, 100% read, slowly emerged the character out of the, you know, so I radially deleted at the side and then just respected my reference. My reference had a large band of a shadow moving across this way and it still looks right even though I just threw in a bunch of demo brush strokes. It still looks right. It still looks like it's dynamic. All right. But again, have goals and expectations. I like the dark stuff. I think so. Um, that's why I know. If, that's why I know. I know if learning traditional can help with digital. It's 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 different. Every sometimes people just want to get a hang of what they're doing, um, and they want to learn traditional just so they can feel some confidence, and then move digital so that they're not learning digital and traditional back at the same time, meaning they're not learning how to draw and learn digital at the same time, sorry. Some people um, feel like they learned, started learning when they moved to digital because they could finally use paint as free as they wanted to and delete canvases without any, you know, with, 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 with reckless abandon. They could just fuck around for five minutes, an hour, not like it, delete it, start all over. You don't have to go out and buy a canvas and feel bad and waste a page and rip it up and throw it. It's just so much more symbolic to paint traditionally and some people just want to get mileage down and so they move digitally. That is definitely what happened with me. My art boomed as soon as I focused on digital and just stopped trying to paint traditional. I didn't have the money for oils and canvases and easels at 50 bucks a, a, for, for a 12 by 12, for a 20 by 20 um and then let alone the good stuff so i was just like man f this this is too dirty i gotta wash my brushes too i, I let me just see what the hell this digital thing is all about and um and then i just got better yeah it's also cheaper once you do have all the digital equipment you don't have to get a three thousand dollar wacom google in my search in my uh, channel history look at my reviews for wacom wacom is not the staple of quality they make some of the weirdest decisions with their designs. Like, who the hell approved of this freaking noise problem in the latest Cintiqs? What the? F you know, 2K for a distorted screen that looks like it was broken so that I could just get a paper feel? Fuck off, you know? And besides, you're supposed to be using um, a Surface tablet, uh, I'm sorry, a desktop tablet anyway for painting because it's a little bit more easy to, I mean, for me, I draw much better when I separate myself from the screen. Um, it's like, you know, like a, like putting my brush strokes on a projector versus painting on a screen. I feel like my hand gets in the way. I like when my hand is not in the way while I'm painting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you don't mind your hand in the way uh, and you can paint, then you can uh, just buy a, a surface, a cheap, cheap kind of like, um, desktop tap, I'm not saying surface, what am I saying here? I'm saying get a, um, like a, what is the fucking brand of this one? Uh, the Deco Pro, no, uh, what is this, XP pen? Get an XP pen, get a Huion, get um, some of the cheaper, older Wacom stuff that you can find on eBay, don't go buying new stuff, I really can't recommend it at all, if you have to have a screen one. Um, yeah, XC pen, thank you. Um, aside from money, I personally think traditional builds character. It makes you stronger through all those complications, makes you disciplined. Um, I, I could say the exact opposite. Um, working with digital gets you so much more mileage. With mileage comes discipline. Just because you have to be a little bit more careful and suffer doesn't mean you're learning discipline. You're just suffering. Um, and you're not, uh, not necessarily everyone who suffers is going to learn discipline therein. Um, get the mileage down, man. Do as many paintings as you can. And if traditional slows that down, and not, nothing against traditional, um, it's just not a good thing when anything slows down mileage. That's all I'm saying. Um, oh my god, I was already buying a Deco Pro tomorrow. Yeah, I use a Deco Pro uh, medium. And I, and I reviewed it too, and I have my thoughts on it. <clears throat> Um, old Intuos is still really good. That's why I'm saying go to eBay and buy old Intuos. I, I wouldn't, I don't know enough of the new Wacom stuff other than the Cintiq I got last year, which I absolutely hated. I returned it day of. I returned it. I packaged it up. I made my review, packaged it up, and returned it. I could not use that. 
<clears throat> All right, thank you everyone for coming. Please consider the suggestions I have for a safe Thanksgiving. I don't even know how many people are gonna watch this video. Maybe I should make a small Thanksgiving morning. Please just stay safe, make it a different tradition, cook something else. If it's not gonna be traditional and we're not getting together with our family, at least we can um, make it special in our own way, make it a movie night. Um, there's so many ways to have fun without killing people. <laughs> anyway, you can quote me all day. Um, I'll see you guys possibly this Thursday for an all-day stream, hopefully if I have time, and uh, definitely next Tuesday, uh, the 1st of December. Ooh, it's already December. Oh my God, gunshot. Um, and I will see you guys on Tuesday um, or Thursday, and I'll see you guys. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>